Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Now today I'm going to be taking a look at this album. It's The Kinks, Lola vs. Powerman and The Money Go Round Part 1. So yeah, this album review was requested by a comment what I got from a user, uh, PK, P-E-K-E. -E. That's how like this, I'll spell it, not sure like how like you say it. But they asked me to review this record, so that's what I'm doing today. Um, this is The Kinks' 8th studio album. It was released on the 27th of November in 1970. Like many of the Kinks albums, this is a concept album. It's a satirical look at the music industry, life on the road, and like the different people involved with it. Supposedly, that concept was inspired by Ray Davies' frustration at like the lack of interest like, in like, the recent Kinks albums like Arthur and Village Green Preservation Society. Also, throughout the 1960s, the Kinks had faced a ban on live performances, like in like America, like after fights, like in like their early years. Like, however, like by 1969, this ban was this ban was lifted. So, like they toured like America, like in support of like the Arthur album, and um, and like this like kind of like American like influence and um, kind of fed into like the direction which like the band was going in, like embracing kind of country like elements, but like also sort of like more like harder rock, like bluesy bluesy stuff as well and commercially this record was um quite a substantial comeback for them again like, like america where they'd had some limited success like with like their early um, um, early singles pretty much like all but faded like by like the late 60s like whoever here like they came back like with like a big hit single lola like on both sides like off like the atlantic and like it um, actually charted like, again like america like at number 35 like which although it doesn't sound very like impressive certainly for like a, certainly for like a band like who were like regular like failing to chart like this was like quite a um quite a hit album for them unfortunately though it didn't do as well again like the uk and um, like failed to chart like here but it did yield um two um uk top five singles so i will just now show you my vinyl copy here i am lucky enough to have a original uk copy here this is quite a difficult record to get because unlike um all the 60s albums this hasn't been like reissued like otherwise like i probably like would have just got that but this is a um as far as i know like a original UK pressing. It's not in brilliant condition, this. There's a few sort of marks on it and like it's not like the cleanest copy like in the world. Um, but that's the, that's the gatefold. You get to it there, just the lyrics and like, so, like an illustration and you can see sort of like people, someone's like writing on it like as well. There's no fancy like in the sleeve with this, but we're just on the, um, the pie records label for this release here so that's the vinyl record looked at okay so i'm now going to go over each of the album songs i'll score each track out of 10 and then those scores will be used to give us a overall percentage marking for the album so we start off the album with a song called the contenders um which isn't a bad track to open um it starts with a kind of softly strummed like acoustic um uh, acoustic guitar like and, like a snippet like of like a verse which is actually from like the final song um got to be free um i mean like it starts the album quite well but then like we kind of suddenly like get like this get like this quite loud like guitar like introduction like this very sort of like strong like driving beat like through like the song like the guitar like and that like, piano like interplay off each other really well i would say with this song and like probably like this applies to like, the whole record like the production could have been like a bit smoother like a bit more polished like but overall this is a good song there so the contenders would get a nine out of ten from me Strangers on this Next one is um, one of Day Davies' um, contributions to the album. It's a song called Strangers, and this is one of the best songs that go on like, the al um, on the album. I think um, it is a slower, like acoustic ballad, but it has a great, great melody like on it. Um, again, like as I said, that like, the production that like, could have been like, a bit cleaner like on this song, but overall it is a lovely, lovely track there, which I think um, like really, really does like enhance the album. This one is a kind of sort of vaudevillian style track, Denmark Street, which is one of Ray Davies' sort of London songs, like about like the music, about the music publishing offices, like on um, Denmark Street, and um, with quite amusing lyrics, like about like these like executives like signing bands, like what like they don't like particularly like, but saying like you'll make us like a lot of money, like so like we'll sign you, and um, like sort of thing. And um, it has got a kind of slightly sort of novelty sort of feel to it, the sort of like George Formby, like kind of like ukulele sort of novelty kind of thing to it 
um, which does give the song like a quite fun, light-hearted feeling to it. Like it isn't bad this track because it's quite short, like as well, so it doesn't really like outstay its welcome too much. Then the next one is called Get Back In Line, which is another kind of slower number, but it's also really, really good. Again, it's quite strong melodically and like lyrically continues like the kind of concept like off by like, the album, like about um, like artists like placing faith, like in faith, like in like um, music executives, like, kind of, like bosses, like that sort of thing. I mean, like I really like, I think the production actually quite works quite well, like on this song here, like again, like, it's quite primitive um, and like I do quite like the chorus, like where it kind of like, it all goes quite quiet, we've just got, I think it's it, um, John Gosling was the keyboard player, like his like organ, like kind of just like, that kind of just like beds like the chorus down, which I think works out like, really well. So get back in line, a really good track, and we'll get an 8 out of 10 from me. <laughs> And then we get the absolute classic single from the album, Lola, which is an easy 10 out of 10 for me. This is one of King's very, very best songs here. Um, again, it continues the concepts like off like the al um, off the album somewhat, like kind of like about like a band member like getting um, seduced, like in this case like by like a like transvestite. Like it's a very sort of creative, very wacky lyrics I've heard at the time, but I think it's a um, lovely, um, really great song. Um, like I think just like the performance, like the different sets on it like the wee bridge the chorus bit it all just works so well supposedly this was actually inspired by a real life event what happened to drummer Mick Avoy and um, like where like he like used to go to like these sort of like clubs and that and like I said like, a huge hit like for like the band uh, reached number two in the UK number nine like in like America was a real and um, big sort of comeback single like for the band and then following that we get a uh, song Top of the Pop, so it's kind of like Lola was like sort of like in like some cases like the big hit like what like this band has and then like Top of the Pops is kind of like their like reaction to it sort of thing. Like it's a rocker like about like a band's song like climbing like up like the charts like and like becoming and um, like successful. I mean it isn't a great song like kind of like compositionally like it is probably like I would say the weakest track like on the album. Um, and like it does have like some like kind of like clunky rhymes like say like I've just come in at number 25 I'm so glad to be alive it's kind of like that sort of basic like kind of nursery rhyme kind of thing to it but the musicianship like isn't bad like it also has like a solid um, guitar solo like, solo in the middle what in the middle like what builds like tension quite well so yeah like not an awful song there just not one which I often like go back to top of the box to get a 6 out of 10 Eyes down, round and round. So the next song is called The Money Go Rag, which is a kind of piano driven like, music hall style song, which I really like. It is about how like the financial success like, of like this hit single like is distributed towards like a right um, towards like a um, wide range of people like which like the singer once thought that he trusted. As I said, like it's pretty short, quite fun, like doesn't like out of state, it's welcome. We'll get a 7 out of 10 from me. Then flipping over to side two, we get um, starting off side two with two wonderful, wonderful songs. I think first one is "This Time Tomorrow," which is a really nice, wistful track like about like, the experience like of flying, like and like sort of like um, starting like to tour like the world and that. Personally, I think it is maybe played a tad too quickly. This song, like if like it could have had a bit more poignancy. This track, like had they maybe slowed it down and like sort of worked on the arrangement like a bit better because all the components. I like, like a classic, classic tracker here. Um, like as it is, it is a um, very good song though. Um, this time tomorrow we'll get a 9 out of 10 from me. And the next one is also incredibly good. It's um, A Long Way From Home, which would get a 10 out of 10 from me. Um, a really great ballad here um, about like kind of... Uh, about kind of being like lonely, they're like, gone like the road, like away from family and friends. Like Davies would also sort of like explore like these themes, like in a song called uh, "Sitting in My Hotel" from like the um, every everyone's in showbiz at album, which I think is probably um, as good a song like as this is. Like I would say. Um, my only sort of minor complaint with this track though, like is that the harmony vocals are gone, the harmony vocals are gone, like the chorus. They're a bit like I don't say like out of tune, but they kind. 
but they kind of sound like a little bit strained like to me like they could have um like worked on them like a little bit more more like made them like a bit tighter but overall a uh, wonderful song there though like absolutely like in terms of golf, like the music like the lyrics to it it's um a masterpiece there so a 10 out of 10 for me number is called Rats, which is a more kind of rocking, upbeat number. This is another um, Dave Davies um, um, like composition like on the album, and like this is kind of like very much like what we need like after like the two kind of sort of like slower ballads here. Lyrically, it's about the pressures of fame and like kind of like getting like pushed around like, by like different people. So yeah, like not a bad song there, just not like an immediate highlight and not like really like very memorable. But like when it's on, like I do really enjoy the song though. Now the next one could be probably the most sort of controversial like opinion which I'm probably going to air like in like this like video but it's a song 8 man which I'm going to give a 6 out of 10 to. This has never ever really been one of my favourite kink songs. Um, to me, it kind of sounds like a rewrite of like Lola, like I especially like the guitar sound, like the introduction to it. It is very kind of similar like to Lola, like especially like when like you hear them like back to back like on like a greatest hits like um, collection. Lyrically, this song though is actually pretty good at like, pretty creative like the narrator like is fed up like off like the modern world and like kind of wishes to like return to like a more like primitive like form of living and like i mean like understandably like this was a hit single it got to number five like on like the uk charts but only reached number 45 like in like america for me though it's just never been like a massive favorite track of mine like it is one which if it is on like the greatest hits like more like often and not like skip over it oh, man. And then uh, we get song Power Man, which is one of the other title tracks like, on the album. This is a more kind of heavier song, but it is still like acoustically driven this track here. Like almost like kind of like the beat like off like the guitars that what like they sort of like create like kind of like the rhythm like of them. Like it reminds me like a lot of like sort of like heavy metal like music sort of thing. Like I've like they're being turned up like loud, like it kind of has like this proto sort of metal feel to it. Um, I mean like the chorus like is quite catchy. Great tight playing like from the band. Like overall, just a really good song there. And then we close with another one of the records, um, kind of classic tracks. Uh, it's called a song called "Got to Be Free," which is a yeah really solid closing track. Um, it's quite an upbeat like ending to the record, like quite like a positive like optimistic note to end on, like about like being like in about being like an independent person, like kind of free to do as they like. It's kind of got like this country style to it, which I usually would wouldn't go for but it doesn't like sort of take over the song and like the chorus like where like the singer like gotta be free to do what i want and um, that just sounds like so like upbeat like so sort of toe tapping like it's a really really nice song there to end on so i would give gotta be free a 10 out of 10 personally So overall, this album scores 81%, which is a very, very, very good score there. Like, I mean, it isn't a perfect record, this by like, any means, but, um, but like for the Kinks, um, I think that like it's um, one of their most consistent, one of their um, like most solid um, like albums which they put out. I'd say it's a lot uh, simpler. I'd say like it's a lot more simply arranged than like Arthur and like Village Green, like taking influence like from like American country, like as well as sort of hard rock and um, like from bands like Led Zeppelin, um, like which like which like were kind of like this sort of like these sort of like influences would go on to like inform like most of like the other like seventies output. Like this was kind of like the start like of like the seventies for them, like for them like well it pretty much was because it came out like in 1970 but like, you know what i mean like it was kind of like the start like of like a new chapter like in like the kinks and um, career however i would say um the production like on this record does suffer like compared to the relative like lushness like off by like, the arthur album like i said like it was a real kind of turning point like and like transition like for the band i'd say also like the whole kind of concept like of the album does actually really hold up because you don't get like kind of like these wee sort of silly like linking 
theme songs which are kind of just there like for no purpose like every song on here like kind of matters and like is actually um like for the most part like really like worthwhile like it isn't kind of bogged down like with trying like to tell a story like a lot of like the other like kind of concept records like would be like it is just a collection like of songs like around like a kind of similar theme like about like life on the road about like being like a rock star like again like kind of like um pressures like and frustrations like off that you would also notice as well that like, the album is kind of subtitled part one there and um, a part two to this record like was conceived but like recording sessions like were like abandoned like halfway through and like it's never seen the light of day like after this it went on to make and um, muscle hillbillies and um, and then like everyone's in show business which is probably like a part two to this again like some ways like they are kind of like all like links like these seven is like kinks like concept albums like in some way like or like another and um, but yeah, this is um, probably like, one of like, the best ones that like, like, they put out, um, Kink's Lola al album. So yes, I hope you have enjoyed this review, and I'll see you all next time for the next one. Goodbye.